So, I apologize uh, for starting with a disclaimer, but this is not about the Quake game. <laughs> so, sorry for disappointing, for disappointing you terribly at the very beginning. It's about uh, seismic hazard risk and about uh, a software engine uh, that allows seismic scientists to compute um, earthquake hazard. So just to give you a quick idea what it, what it does is, so on the left-hand side, you see a map of so-called earthquake faults. Uh, so these are faults that have been identified by, uh, by the seism uh, seismologists in the past. And based on this information, uh, we call the input model, we run uh, the OpenQuake engine that, cal that calculates something uh, called a hazard map, which you see on the right-hand side. A hazard map uh, basically gives you an idea um, what, what, what the probability of a certain earthquake of a certain magnitude is occurring in a certain region in a certain period of time. Okay. And as you can imagine, um, Oh, so yeah, a quick background on OpenQuake really, it's, uh, it's open, <laughs> so it's open source, um, and um, it's also developed in the open, so we have an ILC channel, um, it's all there for people to use. Uh, OpenQuake development is funded by the so-called Global Earthquake uh, Modeling Foundation, and uh, the general thrust is, so what the foundation um, is aiming for is global uh, sorry harmonization of uh, earthquake research so and one way to to get there is to give everybody like an engine th that they can run uh, using various algorithms to compute seismic hazard and also risk okay so before I forget this uh, this is lightning talk I won't be able to touch upon everything and and uh, show you any details but um, I have some links here, so anything that, that is underlined is a link, so once you get your hands on the presentation, you can basically uh, drill down into things by just by clicking on these links. Okay, so uh, OpenQuake was designed from the beginning to be elastic, so we know, we know elastic from uh, Amazon's Elastic uh, Compute Cloud, basically um, it's capable of adapting itself uh, to its computation environment. So right now, we run it on a network of physical machines, but there's nothing to prevent you to uh, run it on a, in, in a cloud or even in a, in a hybrid setup, where you have, uh, let's say, a cluster of physical machines and for big jobs to burst into cloud to bring, to bring on additional uh, uh, compute power. Uh, this is uh, some of the technology we use to get there. Um, so we, we use... Uh, we, we do mainly programming and development in Python. We have a bit of a Java legacy code that we hope to phase out in the next two to three months. Uh, for, uh, for pushing uh, calculations into the network, we use a piece of software called Python Celery. And Python Celery is underpinned, uses a RabbitMQ, which is an AMQP message broker, as its backend. And last but not least, we also use Redis, a uh, very nice uh, key value store uh, for a number of things. So this is the uh, unavoidable architectural uh, diagram, if you want. Uh, I just want to give you a quick idea how, how this works. So once we start the computation, um, like the nature of these computations is we want to compute hazard for a geographical area. Uh, this geographical area is broken down into points, into a bunch of points. And for each of these points, we need to compute uh, seismic hazard. The nice, uh, the nice property of these calculations is uh, that they are ideally parallelizable. So we can just take these points and just push them in, in, into a job or task queue. And then uh, we have worker machines that just consume tasks from, from, from a task queue, carry out calculations, and then uh, in some way uh, record or send back the results of the calculations. So the way it works is, so we have Python code. Uh, it, it uh, basically takes the region of interest and breaks it down in, into, into a number of points. For each point, a so-called salary task is created. Uh, salary then, um, under, the, under the hood, uh, uh, pushes, uh, pushes uh, task information into a RabbitMQ queue. Um, on the worker side, uh, the workers, which you see here, uh, on this side, um, take these uh, tasks and compute them 
And um, in our particular case, they, they're writing to immediate results into Redis, into the Redis key value store. Okay, so um, what I want to convey to you is some experiences, uh, or some, some of the learning, learning points, some of the learnings, uh, some of the stuff I learned the last two months, because uh, beginning in um, October, November, uh, we really had to uh, start using OpenQuake in a, in a large-scale fashion. So we have something called the original program, and these are seismic scientists that need to compute um, the hazard for all of Europe. And this was, this was the first occasion on which we needed to scale up OpenQuake, really. So um, Europe was broken down into 150,000 uh, points, and uh, uh, seismic hazard uh, need, needed to be computed for all of these points. And uh, so the way, um, the way the algorithm worked before we started sort of scaling it up and figuring out why things are stuck and crashing and not, not um, performing properly is we used to compute everything in stages. So there are these 150,000 points. So what we did is we first computed the hazard, uh, seismic hazard for all of them. Okay. And only when we had uh, uh, the computations done for all of them did we proceed to the next stage and serialize them, i.e. wrote them to a database and or did an export to XML files. Uh, we also came to realize that uh, we get the best throughput if we, if we put one point, if we basically give uh, each salary task one uh, point to calculate. So if you said, so, uh, if we give a salary task 10 points to calculate, it just, it just wouldn't work properly and uh, things would fall down. And the, the, the resulting throughput was, was not very good. Okay, so uh, what that means is that uh, when we start a calculation, we, we basically hand over 150,000 points to salary and say, hey, can you please calculate this for us? Okay, and these are some of the problems uh, we ran into when we did that. Okay, so the first problem we had is that the hazard calculation gets, uh, got stuck. And uh, the problem uh, was finding out, like, why is it getting stuck? Where is it getting stuck? Okay, so we had four machines uh, running these calculations, over 100 processes, RabbitMQ, Redis, Postgres, Celery. I mean, we had Python, Java interaction issues. Um, there was the Erlang virtual machine that, that is running a RabbitMQ. I mean, there, were, there, were, there were plenty of, 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 of possibilities what could be broken and like, what, why, why this calculation is stuck. And uh, so the first thing we learned is, okay, well, uh, in order to really um, uh, to, uh, to manage uh, like uh, large-scale uh, operations properly, the software needs to be more inspectable. Like um, we, we must have an, we must have an uh, idea of what is actually going on when we start uh, such a huge job. So what we did what we did is we basically said, okay, well we have 150,000 points to, to to calculate. I mean, how many do we calculate before we get stuck? We didn't like there was no way to tell. So the first thing uh, we did is we introduced uh, something called progress counters. So we've wrapped uh, the salary task into a Python decorator, and if the task uh, succeeded, uh, a Redis counter was incremented. And, and if, it, if it failed, if it threw exceptions, another Redis counter was incremented. So we could look into, at the Redis counters uh, at any given time, and we knew how far we got along uh, with our computation. Okay, so the other uh, uh, learning point is you, re you really need to monitor your entire infrastructure. So basically, you need, to, you need to make sure, if you're using RabbitMQ, is it up, is it running, is it healthy, likewise for Redis, likewise for a database. Because uh, if something goes wrong, it's really like a, a, a needle in a haystack situation. I mean, where do you look? Where do you find things? So that's, uh, that's why I need to monitor your services so that you know, okay, they're all in the green zone. We find with RabbitMQ, we find with Redis, so it must be something else. Uh, another important... Uh, point is, so if you're using some kind of open source uh, infrastructure, RabbitMQ, Redis, whatever it, it might be, do connect with, with, the, with the development teams. Do connect with the upstream, okay? Because um, if you run into problems, you need to talk to these people, okay? So in this case, we, uh, we connected with the RabbitMQ development team, and they were very, very helpful. I mean, they went out of their way to, to help us analyze what's going wrong, uh, with, uh, uh, 
with RabbitMQ. And it wasn't even their fault. Like, uh, we came to realize that we were, we were using RabbitMQ in, in a not so optimal fashion, and this is why we were running in, in the problems. So big thanks to the RabbitMQ team here. They really helped us uh, figure out these things. And also to the Celery author, uh, the person who wrote Celery, uh, who was also very, very helpful in diagnosing, helping us diagnose things. Okay, so with these things out of, of the way, uh, we were, we were uh, in a position to run the jobs, and they would, they would actually uh, progress and, and complete. They would, so they would, they would come to an end, and we had results. Uh, the next, next step was to uh, say, okay, how can we optimize things? I mean, now we're running, now we're in business, okay, but this is not, um, not as optimal as you, as you would like it to be. So... The couple of ideas we had, uh, so the first thing uh, that, that, that we realized was wrong is this computation in stages approach. So you have 150,000 points, you compute them, okay, you have to weigh it. It can take, depending on the uh, weight or complexity of the seismic model, like to, uh, this can really last weeks. Okay, now imagine what happens if, you, if something crashes, like let's say 10 days into your computation. I mean, you lost a lot of CPU time, just like that. It's gone, it's operated. So the other thing is, if you do it this way, uh, so you compute, you number crunch, and all, you basically need to hold on to all of your intermediate results. Because you don't, you don't persist anything, you don't serialize anything until everything is computed. Which, which is really stressing, like, uh, you know, resources. You need to, you know, have a lot of RAM. Redis needs to be up and running all the time because this is where the intermediate results went, et cetera, et cetera. And also, one thing, uh, so RabbitMQ, uh, like, uh, was working very well for us, but so if you say, here's 150,000 uh, points and give it to Celery, what Celery will do is it will create one salary task queue, and it will enqueue 150,000 tasks into that one queue. But for each task, excuse me, it will also create a result queue. Okay, so what you, what you end up with is 150,000 150, and one queue. One queue uh, holds all the tasks, and then you have one, one result queue per task. Okay, and I mean, that's a lot of queues. And, and even, even, even RabbitMQ Rabbit was uh, having difficulties with this. So this was not really um, scaling well. It, it was not very, very tweakable, configurable. So what we decided to do is uh, to carry out uh, this calculation in slices, in blocks. So it's OK. We don't need to compute 150,000 uh, uh, points uh, in one go, we'll basically cut it down in slices. We'll break it down into slices. So we'll operate, let's say, in 60, 16K chunks. Okay. So what that meant then is, so we compute uh, hazard for, six, for 16,000 uh, points, and once that was done, uh, we would also store them. We would, uh, we would persist them. So, and if the computation uh, like failed or crashed uh, at, at any given point, we, we didn't lose all of our computation because we did checkpoint, we did store in between. It also meant that uh, we didn't have that many result queues anymore. So basically, the number of result queues was the uh, size of the batch, size of the slice, etc. Uh, the other thing we learned is, uh, so there's a, there's a mode uh, for salary tasks where you can fire a task. You can say, do this carry out, do this work for me, but don't write back. Don't send me a result message at all. Okay. So how does that work? Well, the way this works is that uh, the task uh, calculates, computes what you need, and then stores the result in some intermediate store, in this case, in Redis. Okay. So this, reduces, uh, this further reduces the number of result queues um, on, on the, on the so-called control on side. It also reduces the uh, message traffic considerably. Okay, last but not least, we came to realize that what we can do, like once we enter this modus operandi where we have, where we don't receive uh, results, result messages anymore, basically uh, the control node which was, which was pushing all this work into the compute cluster was, was free, was idle. And it could, it could, uh, it, it could, it could look at the intermediate uh, result store and pluck, collect these results and serialize them while the tasks were running, which gave us another like uh, improvement of 16% of in performance. 
Okay, so some outlook and some closing remarks. Uh, we're pretty happy with the state of the computation as it stands. Uh, one thing we'd like to do uh, in future, uh, so right now we have something called a control node. So we, we have a process that, okay. May I finish this slide or? Sure. Okay. So what we're thinking about is uh, we're thinking of using Juju uh, for service orchestration and also reconfiguration. So it's so what we'd like to be able to do is add machines to the compute cluster, and these additional machines should change uh, the behavior uh, of the oral computation, like the, the block size, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, we made uh, we made generally good experiences with uh, our infrastructure, so Celery, RabbitMQ, and Redis, and um, I can really recommend these pieces of technology for you if you need to build a similar system. Thank you.